one uh, reason why Pastor thought that is how did she even know? Right? The master of the banquet didn't even know. Yeah, the groom didn't even know. It was the overall responsible for and the master of the banquet below him is, is, is responsible. They didn't know somehow Mary knew. So it seems like somehow she's connected. And somehow she's going to feel some shame or she's going to feel some embarrassment for these uh, apparently, again, friends of hers. We don't know for sure. The Bible's not clear. But uh, it seems like it, this really affects this woman called Mary, who was the mother of Jesus. And so they have this situation. There's no wine. A pretty serious problem. Pastor went into great detail about how serious that is. He even made the statement that they could be fined. It was even not only a, a social embarrassment, but even a legal responsibility for people to provide food and wine. And they could really, really, really be in trouble uh, in this in this situation. Something had come up which was really, really serious and somehow affected Mary. And Mary did a very smart thing. She went to Jesus. She had an inside, inside line with Jesus, the God of the universe, that the holy uh, human being who perfectly knew Almighty God happened to be her only son. Uh, uh, excuse me, happened to be her son. At that time there were more it happened to be her son. And so she went to Jesus. And I'm really curious. Uh, I was talking with Felix about this yesterday. And thinking about this as to what exactly did Mary see in Jesus? You know, had he done some miracles growing up? Uh, maybe some of you are aware that there's the uh, apocryphal books, books that we would consider not a part of Scripture. I, I believe maybe the Gospel of Thomas, if I'm not mistaken, that talk about miracles that talk about there being clay birds, people were playing with clay birds, and Jesus is a young boy, maybe 10 years old or something, all of a sudden said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if those clay birds could fly? And since he's Jesus, he made those clay birds fly. Again, we don't consider that scripture, but who knows? Maybe that's true, maybe this is true, maybe that's true. Maybe Mary saw something. One thing we know for sure is what? Jesus lived a perfect life before Mary. Jesus lived a perfect life, which of course, for sure, included honoring his mother, loving his mother, being a support to his mother. And Mary knew there's something awfully special about this son of hers. And so when the problem came up, Mary knew there's somebody in this room, he has no money that I know of, he has no political power that I know of, he has no connections I know of other than other than somehow she knew, yeah, not only from this experience, but what was she even told by the angel? Mm -hmm. She told the one that you're carrying, that you're supernaturally conceived with, is the son of God, his father, is almighty God. So somehow she knew that this Jesus who had no money, who had no human connections that could help with this situation, who knows who else was there? Maybe there was a mayor there. She didn't go to the mayor. Maybe there's a wealthy man there. She didn't go to the wealthy man. She went to Jesus. All she knew was he has one connection. Who's that connection with? The almighty God of the universe. And she had a, she had a close line to Jesus, with Jesus being her son. But what about Jesus? He had even a closer line with God Almighty. And she says, with this problem, I'm going to the one who knows God. I'm going to the one who knows God. I don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, maybe he didn't do. Maybe those apocryphal books are wrong. And he didn't really do anything supernatural growing up. Again, apart from the apocryphal books, we don't really have any sign. There's nothing in the scriptures. That's all. Some of you may be aware in the Quran, it speaks about Jesus as a baby and she began to talk. As a baby, I believe. I read somewhere, even from birth. I read somewhere else, like his first word was 18 days or something like that. He could already speak. So again, uh, who knows what exactly Mary saw, but maybe she didn't see anything. And she just knew Jesus had an incredible connection with the Father, and that's the one I'm going to. In one way or the other, I don't know what he's going to do, but I have a huge, huge confidence that Jesus will do right in this situation. Jesus will have some solution in this situation. Do we have that confidence? 
Do we have that confidence in Jesus? If there's a major problem and the disciples who lived with Jesus saw Jesus so incredible, he once saw miracle after miracle after miracle, had a real hard time grasping the idea that Jesus makes all the difference. Right? They saw so much, and yet they're in a boat and there's a storm. And they say, What? We're going to drown. It doesn't matter that Jesus is in the boat with us. There's a storm. We're going to drown. Jesus, don't you care? We're about to drown. And Jesus didn't say, why didn't you wake me up sooner? Don't you know what he said? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Do you remember when Pastor brought this up with the 5,000 people? 5,000 people are needing to be fed. And Jesus said, you feed them. And they're like, okay, if we get that command from Jesus, surely he's not going to give us an empty command. If he commands us, I'm ready. How? I'm ready. How do I pray, God? I'm ready. Is that what they said? They said, no, we can't feed them, Jesus. We can't feed them. Even, uh, I believe the old enemy said eight months wages. This one said six months Wages, even six months' wages could not feed this large crowd. Okay, the fact that you're Jesus, the fact that you commanded us to feed them, that doesn't play into our thinking right now. That's not real life. That's not real life. Real life, this is a big crowd, there's no food, and you just said something crazy, Jesus, telling us to feed them. Because we can't feed them. There's no money, no food, we can't feed them. That's reality. And the fact that you, Jesus, the fact that you've done miracle after miracle, the fact that we put our faith in you and say you're the God of gods and you're the Lord of lords and we think you're the most amazing in your God in the flesh, right now, that doesn't make a difference. How can they have that answer? How do we have that answer? Or maybe it's just me, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Believing all these amazing, amazing things about Jesus. Singing all these amazing, amazing things about Jesus. But when it comes to real life, Jesus doesn't play in the equation. Where's the best doctor? We need him. Who do we know that has money? We need money. Yeah. Who has power? Who has uh, connections? Who has authority? We need that. The fact that we claim, what do we claim? We claim to be Christians, children of Almighty God. Jesus himself lives inside of us. Jesus said, you didn't chose me, but I chose you. I chose you, and I want to live through you. And then Jesus who claimed, this is the one I really want to hit home with, Jesus who said over and over and over again, just what? Just ask. <laughs> Just ask. Just ask. Believe that I'm real and ask me, would you please? Believe that I'm real and ask me. On the last night that Jesus was with his disciples, just before going to be crucified, right? Pouring his heart out to them. Six times in three chapters, six times that night, he said, please ask. Please ask, you're not going to see me. It's going to look hopeless in a few hours. I'm going to be crucified right on the cross, but I'm still going to be alive. I'm going to live inside of you. Ask, you're not going to see me anymore, like these last three years. These last three years, they couldn't even think that Jesus made a difference. But yet, Jesus is begging them. Please believe that I'm real. Please believe that I, I am who I claim to be. Please believe that I make a difference. And ask, 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 ask. We'll get back to that, but let's continue on with the story. And so that's what Mary did. Mary asked. And how huge of a question is this that they're asking? Jesus answered, verse 4, Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. What you're asking, Mary, is absolutely no small thing. Yeah, praying to God to turn the water into wine, that's easy. There's nothing hard about that. But Jesus, uh, Mary 
you're not on the agenda for today. And Jesus was extremely, extremely focused on one thing in his life, and what was that? I'm here only and always to do my Father's will. He leads me, and I do what he tells me. He leads me, I do what he tells me. The time in John where he says, the words I speak are not my words. It may sound like my words. You may think that was me speaking, but it's not my words. It's my Father speaking through me. I'm just a vessel. That's what humans were designed to be, a vessel for the divine life living in and through us. In John chapter 8, he says, my father is with me because I always, not just sometimes, not just on Sunday morning, not just when I'm feeling, feeling victorious, I always do what he wants me to do. I always do what my father wants me to do. I find out what he wants me to do, and that's what I do. And I have freedom to do that because I have no sin holding me back from doing what my father wants me to do. I find out what he wants me to do, and I do it. That's my life. And Mary, you weren't, you weren't on the agenda for today. God didn't say, oh, go to the wedding, and by the way, you're going to turn water into wine there. That wasn't on the plan. That wasn't on the agenda, Mary. But what? But I will honor you as my mother. I will obey you as my mother. How incredible is that? The relation that Mary had with Jesus, Jesus having that relationship, willing to go outside of the plan, willing to be bothered. Maybe we have huge, huge dreams, huge, huge plans, huge, huge goals of things we want to do for God, but are we willing in the middle of that to be obedient to this or that, especially our own family, our own parents? Jesus was, right? And let's not go go too far with this and say family is always the most important Jesus here said family is the most important remember there were times when Jesus didn't make family the most important right there were times his brothers came to him saying let's go to the feast together and Jesus said what no my time is not right and God hasn't given me a green light like he gave me a green light here and John 2 God hasn't given me a green light to go with you even though you're my brothers yeah, I'm going to say no and how about the mother? Was there a time he said no to his mother? His mother and brothers came to see him. And someone said, your mother and brothers are outside waiting to see you. Oh, my mother is? Let's leave all the stuff. I have to go see my mother. Is that what he said? He said, no. No. At this point, that's not my focus. Yes, they're my mother and my brother. Yes, I love them. But right now, I have a higher calling. And he pointed to his disciples and said, these are my mother and my brothers. This is the family that God has given me. This is my focus, and this is my pure devotion right now. So let's not read too much into this, but at this point, at this time, Jesus, who has this divine calling, and this was not on the plan, said, here, God wants me, and I have the freedom, and that's one incredible thing for us to see. We have the freedom to do what God is leading us to do, even if it's against what we thought the plan was as we woke up that morning. Jesus has the freedom here to obey his mother, to honor his mother. And he says, that's what I'm going to do. Can you think of another time in the scriptures where Jesus also went against the plan? There's the time that a woman came up to him and said, Jesus, I need your help. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. I need your help. And what's Jesus say? Jesus says, sorry, that's not the plan. You're not an Israelite. In my plan, my goal, what God sent me to do was to be a blessing to the Israelites. And you're not an Israelite. I feel sorry for you. I'm sorry your daughter is suffering, but that's not my plan. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Sorry. Hope it works out for you. And what's the woman do? The woman says, I can't take that answer. Here is Jesus, the God of gods, all powerful. I've heard stories of his miracle. Okay, so I'm not an Israelite, but this all loving, all incredible God, he is my only hope. I can't take no for an answer. It says, please, please, please help. 
And what did Jesus say? Really harsh words. What did he say?